hello I hope you all are doing well today we have a very interesting and probably very lengthy video for you uh, entitled the ultimate Harry Potter Tay, which was originally developed by someone called Isabeau's Literary Musings. Is that I believe that that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we'll go ahead, if we can find it, we'll link the original in the description. But this is a very long list of questions about Harry Potter topics. And as you probably know, we're inclined to answer them. If you intend on reading or watching these, you know, this series, and you haven't done that yet, this is going to be a bad time for you if you don't want spoilers. Right. So, <laughs> thank you for watching, but we'll see you later. And so we have several categories, beginning with the very general and moving more sort of into the very specific and then closer to the films. And so we'll go back and forth between a lot of different things here. Um, but to begin with, a very difficult question, but one we've all been asked before, which is what is your favorite book? Mine is Deathly Hallows. Oh, why? Because I love an, I'm a sucker for an epic conclusion. Mm, that's that's just, it's just my personality. That's I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like Prisoner of Azkaban. That's the one I've read the most. I feel like that's a lot of people's favorite. Like they really love the it's, complexity of it. It starts to get different and mm -hmm. then you've got a little bit of a time change and then you have somebody who's an outlaw. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Just love your criminals. I sure do. To be clear, it wasn't him. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Second question. What is your least favorite so it's hard for this one because obviously you love the series as a whole, but I feel like the one that I connect to the least and am the least excited to read is probably the fourth one. Just because it's kind of in the middle, and I mean I do, I feel like the last time I read it I liked it more, but generally every other time before that I always felt like, okay, the fourth book's here, mm. you know. My least favorite book is either the fourth or the fifth, so Goblet of Fire or Order of the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. The more that I've read and reread Goblet of Fire in the past, the more I kind of like it and I find new things to enjoy about mm -hmm. it. Uh, and I really actually do love Order of the Phoenix, but it, God, he's just so stupid. He's very angry. He's and like, very angry. You get why he's angry. He has every right to be, but it's still sometimes hard to read it. Right. It's yeah. hard mm -hmm. to get past him just not shouting and yeah. yeah. Number three, favorite movie. Um, my favorite movie is probably Deathly Hallows Part 1, which is, I feel, the least liked of all of them because it is the split and there's, that's all the camping scenes. Mm. But for me, as a movie, I really like the vibe that it has. I like how emotional it is at times. And I feel like they took that part of the book and did a really good job translating it into a film. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like the first two. You like the nostalgia? They are, you're, it's a really, you have to admit, they gave a really good introduction to a lot of really small facets of it mm -hmm. in the first two. Because the first two books were shorter, they were a lot more faithful. Yep. We had uh, what I call the correct Dumbledore, and despite some of the acting and some of the dialogue, I think they were very nice. They're very young, they're very happy, they're very like, sparkly. It's that first introduction before it really starts to get aggressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess in some of the later ones I might say six, only because it was not textually accurate, but it was a really good film. Six is really funny. Six, yeah, six is good. Well, conversely, least favorite movie. To go against you, my least favorite movie is Chamber of Secrets. Why? <laughs> so I recently, um, within like the last year, rewatched all of them um, with my boyfriend who had never seen them before. And so I was trying to watch them with like a more critical eye and just and stop like the nostalgia part because when I watch them I usually do it out of nostalgia, right? So I think the second movie was the worst in terms of they have so many dumb jokes in it mm. with them like screaming in the car. It's very Chris Columbus because he, yeah. he's the director for it, right? Like if you watch Home Alone and then you watch Chamber of Secrets, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like it's the same director, right? So I think for me watching it back as an adult, if I had no nostalgic connection to that movie, I would be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> And it's all, and it's the longest of all of the movies too. Is it really? But I'm pretty sure Order of the Phoenix is the shortest, which is hilarious. Um, other than like, I'm not counting oh. really Deathly Hallows. We're gonna get to that right? in a minute. <laughs> but Chamber of Secrets is the longest. I'm pretty sure. But we get an introduction to Jason Isaacs. I mean, yes. Oh, he's but so like, great. <laughs> it's not really what I'm drawn to. Uh, for me, it's Order of the Phoenix. You don't take the longest 
the longest book and make it into the shortest film. I could also say Goblet of Fire for this as well, because there were a lot of challenges with that for me, and a lot of... Oh, you were talking about poor dialogue earlier. I that love, has so I love, love magic. <laughs> Everything's going to change now, isn't it? Uh, yes, Hermione. God. It is. Like, why would you write that in? I'm sure someone's <laughs> got a justification for that somewhere. The last question for this section is favorite quote, which is a very challenging thing to throw at someone. What would you say yours is? So one, my favorite thing that usually comes to mind when I think about this kind of stuff, it's actually the dedication for book seven. So it's not really a quote for the actual book, but it's really powerful because it says the dedication of this book is split seven ways. And then she lists, you know, like her husband, her kids, etc. And then she says, and to you, if you have stuck with Harry until the very end. Mm -hmm. And that like has so much power to me, like yeah. until the very end is like the thing that describes their friendship and the power of that. And them going through everything together so if we were to say favorite quotes that aren't actually part of the book mm -hmm. that would definitely be it but I don't have the quote here but it's the one where they're talking about um, how you can really judge the character of somebody by how they treat not just their equals but their inferiors like that's the general mm -hmm. gist of it and I really like the idea of that quote so mm -hmm. that would probably be one of my favorites I probably have one somewhere, it's probably written down. But the two that I use most frequently are, uh, that is not the fault of the Wizengamot. Which is a very random quote. I use that all the time. Uh, which is in Order of the Phoenix when Harry is almost late to his hearing. And mm. he's like, well, I only just got the letter now. And they're like, well, not our problem. <laughs> uh, and then also when he dies and Dumbledore says to him, like, of course this is happening inside your head, but why should that mean that this isn't real? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good too. All right, moving on to characters. Favorite Weasley? Fred. Cool. Actually, I like Fred and George, but if I had to make one, probably Fred. You must have been really sad at the end then. I was very <laughs> upset. I was more upset about that than I was about Dumbledore. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite Weasley is, I'm biased, Ginny, because Ginny's already my favorite character, so like she's going to be obviously be my favorite Weasley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will say there's a lot to be said for Arthur. I think he does a lot and it goes unrecognized. Mm -hmm. Favorite female character? This is a very challenging question because there are so many good ones and so many obscure ones and I like them for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean like everybody likes to hate Fleur but Fleur's like kind of deep As you down, get older you appreciate Fleur a lot more great. and like how much people just kind of wrote her off because mm -hmm. of her like Vila attractiveness. Right. You know? mm -hmm. From the beginning, my favorite one was Hermione, probably because I connect with it, connected with her initially over our similar hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, setting Ginny aside, of course, I would probably say Luna. Mm -hmm. I really I like love too. her character. Like, I, it's interesting because I don't know if she's necessarily somebody I could really get along with in real life mm -hmm. because she is so out there. But she uh, she has such a good heart and the way that she looks at everything is yeah. so different from how I would look at something. So she's definitely somebody that I could learn something from too. Favorite villain? Mm -hmm. This is so difficult because obviously, not obviously, but... I think you're meant by the end to believe that the real villain of the series is Umbridge mm -hmm. and just sort of that full-on control and power usurping that she mm -hmm. does. But I really like Rita Skeeter. Oh, nice. I think she speaks mm -hmm. a lot to like what the power of a damaged press really is. Mm -hmm. I also agree with you that I feel like Umbridge is kind of like the ultimate you love to evil in a way because uh -huh. it's just like I got so angry reading her parts right. in the books but I I really there's something about Bellatrix that is mm. really cool too because she's just so out there and so fanatical of her but so interesting to read and listen to you you never quite know what she's gonna do right mm -hmm. she's a good one mm -hmm. that's a good answer <laughs> I get on her level with the hair too as well. yeah you kind of got like a Death Eater vibe going on right now I do. <laughs> Uh, favorite male character? This is very challenging. Are we? Is this separate from the Weasley question? Yeah, I would say that, yeah, you can't choose, you can't repeat. You can't choose any of the Weasleys, okay. I'm trying to pick somebody who I don't think gets enough attention. Because, like, there are a lot of very obvious favorites. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, people love Sirius Black. And, yeah. like, oh, yes, everyone loves Harry. Yeah, or can't stand Harry. Pick a, like, pick a male character that isn't one of the main ones. One just popped into my head. Is it Dean Thomas? No. <laughs> But Dean Thomas is pretty great. Dudley Dursley. 
Oh, because of his growth at the end? He, he has a redemption <laughs> arc, and he's really dumb, mm -hmm. but you know what? He means well. <laughs> Yeah, he, For the he has a lot part. to learn. He but. has been socialized in a bad way. Yes, that's but true. But you know what? With different parents, he probably could have been great. And the whole point mm -hmm. is that he doesn't have different parents. Dudley. Nice. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm going to go with Kingsley Shacklebolt. Oh, man. <laughs> that's another good one. <laughs> I feel like he is one of those characters. Because he doesn't pop up until later, right? right. But he's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got a cool vibe. And I like a style. <laughs> he's got style. <laughs> and, like, I just like how he kind of is one of those liaisons. Like, he's really mm -hmm. high up in the ministry. And so he's able to kind of stick with it and give them a lot of information over time. But he just seems like a cool person. He becomes the prime minister. At the end? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well deserved. Mm -hmm. The last question for characters mm -hmm. is favorite professor. I mean, there's a lot to love about Professor McGonagall. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, I sense a but here. <sighs> yeah, I know. I, well, I just don't. I'm, it's one of those things like, I don't want to do, I don't want I don't want to pick her because everybody else is picking her. You know who I actually don't like a lot, but I think he's fascinating as a teacher. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is how I'm going to take this whole thing. Is Professor Slughorn. Okay. He's yeah. such a coward, but he does the right thing in the end. Mm -hmm. And he actually knows a lot about potions. He's actually yes. qualified he, to yeah. teach in that role. He loves to have his ego stroked and to like be surrounded by really important people, but he is a good teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have to go with McGonagall. And she's such an interesting um, person. Like, there's so much of her that we didn't get to see in the books, but because she's not the main focus, right? But she's a really powerful force, and um, I liked having her around. Speaking <laughs> of people who are interesting choices, <laughs> yes. Sybil Trelawney. Mm -hmm. One of those people who's definitely, like, a practitioner, but not an instructor. Yeah. Like, she can she can do the whole prophecy thing, but as a teacher, she's terrible. She's not a good teacher. But she's obviously really good at the one thing that she does, yes. because it's a gift, and it happens when it does. And Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, that's so interesting. I work a lot in hiring. So. <laughs> All right. Would you rather A, oh, this is easy, wash Snape's hair, or B, spend a day listening to Lockhart rant about himself? I have to do Lockhart. I can't, I'm not touching, I'm not touching anyone's hair unless, you know, I'm like really close with them, but I'm definitely not touching Snape's hair. Yeah. So I would rather listen to Lockhart blab. I would kind of have to go into it with like, a, okay, this is going to be an experience, mm -hmm. but here we go. <laughs> I think you, that's going to be my answer as well. I think you can learn a lot about him just from listening. You can mm -hmm. start to like make a little spreadsheet of like, but you said this three hours ago. Like, yeah. Watch it which one track. is it? The next one. A, dual and elated Bellatrix, or B, dual and angry Molly Weasley. Bellatrix scares me, though. She is really scary, and she probably knows more evil things. Yeah. I think I'd rather duel an angry Molly. Mm -hmm. I can deal with, like, motherly rage. <laughs> I don't know if I can deal but with... But just, like, off-the-rockers rage. Right. <laughs> I don't know. If she's probably... Yeah. That's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, our hair would probably, like, electrify, and we'd wind up killing <laughs> each other that way. <laughs> would you rather travel to Hogwarts via A, the Hogwarts Express, or B, a flying car? Definitely the Hogwarts Express. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I want that experience. I love trains. I, I like traveling on trains. It's like fun. Trains. And like going from London into the Scottish Highlands on a train, mm -hmm. the best. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of danger involved in the flying car. It's too much responsibility. Like, I just want to relax and right. like hang out with my friends. There's mm -hmm. a certain level of safety and ground transportation <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Next, would you rather kiss Voldemort or give Umbridge a bubble bath? And I would like to address this question by saying, like, you don't really give someone a bubble bath. I believe the point of bubble baths is relaxation and to be by yourself. So is this, like, I've drawn a bubble bath for her even though I hate her? Or are you, like, sponge bathing Or do bathing I have umbrage? to, like, bathe her? Because <laughs> both of those are incredibly uncomfortable. The kiss would be over faster, though. Yeah, but you'd probably die instantly. <laughs> well... Neither of those I people are actually going to let you do those things That's to them. That's true. I'm just going to say kiss Voldemort because it'll be over faster. Oh, I'm going with the other one. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That one was weird. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. The last one is A, ride a hippogriff, or B, ride a firebolt. I'd rather ride a firebolt. Yeah, I'm with you. I think there's a there's a higher chance of not dying. Yes. I, I appreciate that, like, once you've gained the hippogriff's respect, it's fine, but, like, I don't want to be riding this creature that flies and has a mind of its own. I'd rather control a broom. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's probably, you can be taught a little bit more about how to ride a broom. Oh, you, yeah. You can oh, yeah. be taught how to ride it. Like, a hippogriff is still a very wild, dangerous animal. Right. Like, I could take a class on how to ride a broom. 
and feel like I but know what I'm doing. doing. First year is fine, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, next section is book to movie adaptation. Is there a character which you felt differently about in the movies versus the books? Well, actually, I think the films did a really good job of making you feel differently about Neville. Oh, yeah? You think so? I, well, I think maybe Matt Lewis did. Mm -hmm. Because he... Talk about a glow up. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> he definitely changed a lot. And I think they, I mean, they gave him that really big scene at the end. Like, you feel more like he deserves the recognition and like the somberness that he gets when you see him win the points that win in the house cup oh, in the okay. first That's one key, yeah. and you know when you see him looking at the mirror of Erised mm -hmm. or, or not the mirror but like the picture of the DA that's yeah in the, when they're in the room of requirements exactly like to sort of see those things on screen you feel it reading but I feel like you feel it stronger seeing it played out okay. with a real yeah. human face mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it the opposite direction and say like what who do I think they made worse and I feel like this is a general consensus with a lot of people is just how Ron was written mm -hmm. and how they rarely showed a really good strong moment from Ron that existed in the books like Ron's a very flawed character but he had more shining moments good moments in the books more redeemable moments mm -hmm. and in the movies anytime he should have been the one saying the smart line they gave it to Hermione and right. they made him much more the comic relief or like yeah he's a funny guy in the books but he's not the comic relief yeah. you know like that's not who his character is whereas in the movies I felt like they kind of made him just more of that in general. Mm -hmm. Is there a movie you preferred instead of the books? No. 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 They're, the there's, books are way better than all of the movies. There's just so much more. You can't fit everything into a film. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. And so much of what makes these as wonderful and enduring as they are are those smaller moments, a lot of which are Ron's, mm -hmm. that just are never going to be made in there because you have a limited amount of time because of the limited amount of attention span. Richard Harris or Michael Gambon as Dumbledore? I think I know how you feel. I've read a lot about this. <laughs> Firstly, read a lot about it? it's a bit of an unfair question. Yes, I've read a lot of people's opinions okay, about this. Okay. A lot of defenses about this. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult question and almost an unfair question because you can't really do something about the fact that the man died. Yes. So there had to be someone different either way. Mm -hmm. If we're comparing them point blank, I prefer the like wise, gentle way that um, Richard, Richard Harris, Harris portrayed him as opposed to Michael Gambon and obviously we know you know did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire was perhaps not the best executed but at the same time he gave Dumbledore the style exactly that he, Kingsley Shacklebolt mm -hmm. mentions <laughs> he gave him the little bit of the spunk and he mm -hmm. sort of gave him that attitude mm -hmm. problem that he had the whole time because like mm -hmm. Dumbledore goes and asks and so much of Harry yeah and I don't think we would have gotten that like we got the repenting angle from him but mm -hmm. but Michael Gambon also gave us that tiredness and like he humanized him a bit more yeah mm -hmm. he didn't look um when Richard Harris did it it was like oh Dumbledore's perfect mm -hmm. like Richard Harris mm -hmm. is so lovable mm -hmm. and then Michael Gambon made him more like oh okay yeah this guy is flawed yeah mm -hmm. he gave well he gave him that meanness like how dare you ask this 11 year old boy to like spend his entire life in service of this thing that you concocted because you know that he's gonna be the only one to do it yeah and uh some of the things like a pig for slaughter right mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. and I think we I don't think we would have gotten that from Richard Harris mm -hmm. but I mean I prefer the original installment of Dumbledore but we were never going to have that the whole way through. Mm -hmm. I also don't think that Dumbledore should have been played a little bit Irish. <laughs> I didn't realize that was such a he, hot spot for He you. says it in one of the um, one of the behind the scenes things. He's like, oh. yeah. He's like, I also I, I said to him, maybe I could play him a little bit Irish, and if someone okayed that, and then just carried on. There we were, like mm -hmm. that. You want to talk about differences? <laughs> Your top thing, person, event, which wasn't included in the movie that you that annoyed you the most? They didn't do enough with Creature. Oh, there yeah, was, that's a good there point. Was such, yep. There was so much more depth to Creature and a lot more about his psyche that would have just been really challenging to play out. Mm -hmm. And I know that J.K. Rowling had said, like, you, you don't you dare cut him because he's going to be important yeah, later on. and they didn't know that And while time, you're right? making this movie, I'm writing this book and you need to be aware. Mm -hmm. But I... There was a lot more at the end with Creature and mm -hmm. his things and the kindness that needed to be shown to him. And I think that was a real hallmark of the end and it mm -hmm. just didn't get done. Mm -hmm. For me, one of the things that I always really wish they had included was going to 
the hospital after oh, yeah. Arthur Weasley was attacked and seeing Neville's parents. That's really moving. That would have added mm -hmm. such a nice layer to Neville's character mm -hmm. for people who didn't read the books and didn't see that side of him. And you appreciate what happens to him in the end and like what he chooses to do so much more because he was always such a tentative person and then to have him like really embrace his Gryffindor side, his right. bravery. Right. The way they describe it with like the little um the rapper, rapper, rappers. Yeah, the rappers, like oh, that's so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And I would have really loved to have seen that on screen. I think it sort of puts a mirror up to Harry too because mm -hmm. they're both it could have been either of them. Exactly. But he picked one mm -hmm. and like they're both boys and they really like Neville's parents are alive, but they both sort of don't have Parents. Yeah, really would have been an emotional moment if they had had the ability to show that. Mm -hmm. And the last of the book to movie adaptation questions, if you could remake any of the Potter movies, which would it be? I don't really want to remake any of them because now they're sort of set in the zeitgeist. Yeah, like I've accepted them for what they are at this mm -hmm. point. I think if we were going to go back again, I think it's four and five. I think the middle got really, you know, yeah, the fifth the fifth movie definitely could have been longer. Mm -hmm. We could have mm -hmm. added a little bit more in there. We could have drawn a little bit more of it out. We could also have made some changes to the way that Goblet of Fire was done. For instance, let's begin with giving them all haircuts, and we'll move on from there. <laughs> I agree with you that the movies are what they are. Um, obviously, part of me is like, oh, you should make a TV show on one of those big budget channels and have every season be like a book and all that. But I mean, I know that that's not something that's easily possible, but I would love that. Okay, so in the Hogwarts section, the first question is, which house was your first gut feeling that you'd be a part of? And I feel like a lot of us probably have the same answer to this that we don't want to admit, but that was because we were children mm -hmm. and we all were like, oh, it's clearly being positioned that Gryffindor is the best house. I, I want to be in that one. Yeah, you feel the most connection to Gryffindor. I'm right. pretty sure I was like eight when I read the first book. So when you're eight, you don't really self-analyze a lot. And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, Gryffindor is the fun house to be in. Like, that's where everybody cool is. And of course, you don't hear much about the other houses until later on anyway, mm -hmm. right? So by the time you get to book five and six and you see more characters and like really get to know them better from more houses, that's when you kind of start figuring out like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I'm actually That's Ravenclaw. Right. <laughs> yep. So on the tales of that, which house were you actually sorted into on Pottermore or any other quiz? I have done the Pottermore quiz two times, maybe three times now. I can't remember because every once in a while they like revamped the site and you had to go in and like, guys, I remember Pottermore as it was originally done when you mm -hmm. actually went through the story. Got Ravenclaw every single time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've done it three times, twice there. And then once for the the one where they like put them in the United States. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lately I identify with my Slytherin qualities a lot more. <laughs> yeah, like if you were to take the quiz, you'd say Slytherin would be your next category. Probably. Yeah, I think mine would probably be Gryffindor if I were to take it and like get a sub. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a little bit of Slytherin in there and like Hufflepuff would definitely be towards the bottom. <laughs> just not, just not really in me for Hufflepuff stuff. No mm -hmm. friendliness, no kindness, no sharing. <laughs> This is question 23. Mm -hmm. Which class would be your favorite? I was thinking about this and we were looking over the questions beforehand and I think I would like charms the best because it would be the most useful. Hmm. There's so many different things that you can do with charms. Yeah. Like there's so much variation there whereas a lot of the other classes I feel like you're much more restricted to what, what you can learn. Yeah. I feel like mine would probably firstly be potions and secondly be charms. Mm -hmm. One because I really love to like concoct things together when I was a kid just yeah. to like mix up ingredients pretend like the amount of time Make you pretend you're making a potion, potion right so yeah mm -hmm. so it would probably be that one and then charms just seems fun yeah not to like write it off as a fluffy type of class but it just seems like it, it is useful and, and therefore there's, it's there's a lot of potential fun. there yeah. transfiguration sounds a little scary to me frankly because like what if I what if I have a mouse that is also a teacup Mm -hmm. Or the tea, what if I make a biting teacup and then I forget that <laughs> the teacup lip. is biting? <laughs> Which spell do you think would be most useful to learn? I think Akio would be incredibly useful. Mm -hmm. It would make you be way lazier, of course, That's because true. you would just Akio everything to you instead of having to get up and go up and down the stairs or whatnot. Like, I'm not saying I would use it to steal stuff from a store. I'm just saying for, like, around my that house. That did, did not occur to me until you just said it. I was just thinking, well, couldn't you just Akio something, like, way down the street at the... I mean, there's a range on it, Maybe. obviously. The stronger you are as a witcher wizard, obviously, the better your Akio skills would be, but it would be so useful. Or when you've lost something. Oh, that's true. That would be really helpful, I yeah. feel like, generally. Also, Lumos. Like, those mm -hmm. really basic spells. Yeah. Like, the amount of times that I wish I could just say Lumos, because you can't 
find the stupid sun light, light yeah, switch. Right. Yeah. Oh, Pratigo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to put outside my door when I just don't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. Which character do you think at Hogwarts that you'd instantly become best friends with? Probably none of them. Uh, I find it hard to make friends, although I do have a habit, it's true, I do have a habit of attracting the weirdos, so my guess would be Luna. That would be my first guess. <laughs> I'd also like to think that I could bond with Hermione and probably the Patil twins about having like really thick curly hair. That's that's your bonding point mm -hmm. is like this is how I'm gonna start a conversation with these guys. You know, you're curly just gonna hair be like guys stick together. Curly hair club. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But probably Luna. I mean, I want radish earrings too. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. would be my talking point. And then she would just start going on and I'd be like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> and then somehow we'd be friends forever. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying about Luna. That's what I was saying before. It's like, I feel like it'd be really hard for me to be friends with her, but I could also learn so much. Mm -hmm. Like she would teach me to be a better person. Why don't you be our tangential friend who shows up sometimes <laughs> to things, but not to everything. Okay. For me, instantly become best friends with is hard to say because I feel like there's a lot of other characters that have potential to be friends but we don't know enough about them like some right. of those secondary characters I mean I know some that I won't become friends with part of the reason why I like Ginny is because I see a lot of myself in her personality and like I like her so I feel like we would probably become friends mm -hmm. because we would probably have similar vibes mm -hmm. um so she's like the obvious answer mm -hmm. I feel like I could kind of be friends with Neville too yeah, yeah. Neville, Neville and Luna spend a lot of time together, so I feel like I would probably just fall into that mold. I think I'd also become, oh, maybe not friends. I'd want to be friends with the Weasley twins, but I feel like they're too cool for me. Okay, here's the thing, <laughs> is I would try really hard to be friends with the Weasley twins, but they would ultimately be like, yo, Lee Jordan. Ooh, I can yeah, tell that we're like, cool. we're but not like, on their again, level, cool but we're me. associated with them. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> want to think that I could be friends with teachers, but I feel like you can't really be friends with a teacher. Yeah, that's a different But dynamic. I would be pals with teachers. Mm -hmm. You know who else? Susan Bones. Oh yeah, she would be cool. But Susan Bones is the niece of Amelia Bones, and she knows about a corporate patron, so I don't want to be pals with Susan That's Bones. a good answer. I'm sticking with Luna. Luna would find her way to me. Mm -hmm. I can just tell. <laughs> and then finally, the last co category is the miscellaneous one. And the first of those questions is, if you could own one of the three Hallows, which would it be? It would be the invisibility cloak. Like, it has like, to be. The yeah. other ones are bad for you. Yes, like, did you not get the moral of the story? Right. <laughs> did you listen? <laughs> Plus, it would be super handy sometimes to have an invisibility cloak because you could avoid talking to people you didn't want to talk to. Exactly. Like, just leave me alone. <laughs> Is there any aspect of the books you'd want to change? This can be a character, an event, anything. I had something for this earlier and I don't remember what it was. I think that I would, because the, when the books were written versus where we are now in society, I feel like I would want to have a bit more diversity in the books, yeah. you know, like sexuality and all that kind of right. stuff, you know, like that isn't really in there. And I feel like if the books were written today, it would hopefully be better about that. I mean, setting aside some of, all of Rowling's recent statements, said. you know, if we were hoping that she would be a better person, right, you would mm -hmm. hope that those kind of things, I would want them to be included in the books. Right. Or that they were just a little bit more upfront. I remember when we did, had all the casting for the uh, theater production mm -hmm. um and everybody was like in such a hubbub oh, and God, she was yeah. like all I said was big teeth and bushy hair like you could have come out a little stronger like you could have written it a little bit stronger because we all kind of know what you had in mind you're just trying to like yeah up for it now yeah yeah I get what you're saying mm -hmm. I think I had answered this question with the camping oh yeah from earlier like the camping. we just uh, there's got to be a better way to show that and to show that passage of time. And I don't know how to do it, but maybe we could have sat down and figured it out. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind it as much as a lot of other people did, but I get where you're coming from. 28 is favorite marauder. This is a very difficult question. There's there's merits to Remus because he's kind of the calmer mm -hmm. one, but like he does make he's some bad decisions also later. Also such a stick in the mud about some <laughs> things that like, dude, lighten up. I mean, he's also a werewolf, poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like... James is kind of my favorite because, well, maybe because we only hear about his flaws a bit when he's younger. We don't get to see him as an adult, so right. we don't get to, like, mm -hmm. analyze their adult flaws. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why I'm kind of like, James would be cool. Right. Mm -hmm. The only people that, I mean, they all have something terrible happen to them, but mm -hmm. the only folk, two that we get the most 
unfettered account of are Pettigrew and Lupin. Mm -hmm. Because we stick Sirius in jail for 12 years, which obviously really changes a person. Yes. So they're, and uh, like being a werewolf also changes a person, but he's dealt with that since growing up. Mm -hmm. So he's had time to evolve into that and like. And the, he had friends that supported him. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So we really only get a more even account of them as adults. Mm -hmm. I think I would have to say Sirius, but I know that that's fed by the fact that he's played by Gary Oldman, and I really mm -hmm. liked the way that Gary Oldman portrayed him. Yes, he did do a really good job. I agree. Second to last question. If you could bring one character back to life, which would it be? First of all, you don't bring anyone back to life because this is some things just happen, okay? Yeah. Um, but Fred. I know. that was That's my first answer, too. Oh. Fred. Dobby. What happened in the books happened in the books. But man, if I could bring Fred back. Fred. Dobby. Final question. Hallows or Horcruxes? Horcruxes. Ooh. Snap. Going to the dark side. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to counter that and say Hallows. I love the idea of the Hallows. I love the symbol. I love everything about them. Other than the fact that, you know, the Elder Wand and the Resurrection Stone are, like, great for you. But I love the idea of them. I loved the story. I the love The trinity I, of it. Yeah, I love how everything comes together. <sighs> I love Mr. Ollivander. I should have said that for my favorite male character. I love Mr. Ollivander. I think he is one of those people who's really ambiguous about, like, what side he's on. Yes. And when he talks he's about, like, that darkness in him. When he first tells Harry, like, he was, it did, like, Voldemort did terrible things. Great. Great. Like, terrible, but great? Yeah. That just says so much about what he thinks. Point <laughs> being, I think that Voldemort's idea, while awful and involved killing a lot of people, but, like, as a strategy to stay alive because he didn't know what was going to happen, like... That's not, he's not stupid. And it's powerful, like, it's yeah. creepy cool magic. Yeah. The idea of that. Split it is your cool. soul seven times, and, like, the items that he chose were significant. You know how I have... I mean, but he was also like, oh, yes, I'm obsessed with things that make me more powerful. He like. had some weird obsessions. <laughs> There's no lie. But, like, you know how I assign great cosmic significance to, you know, insignificant things. Yes. So, I like that where his head is at mm -hmm. over there. So, Horcruxes. How do you feel? Hallows or Horcruxes? Also, what does that question mean? It means you have to pick. But pick on what, based on what criteria? That's how, that you just, that's, that's all you get. It's, we're, Horcruxes. We're just seeing where your mind goes. <laughs> Great. We did it. That was a lot of questions. That was a lot of questions. And we went a bit deep on some of them we there. We sure did. We have opinions. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys do too. So if you want to share any of your opinions, mm -hmm. definitely do so down below. Or well thought out justified arguments to any of our yeah. <laughs> indications. Like, cool, you like Peter Pettigrew? Great. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tell us. But don't tell me I'm wrong because I'm being a serious plan. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. Everything that you might want to know about us is in the description below. We'll see you very soon. And that brings this video to... A close.